Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me. The topic that was uh, allotted to me is uh, reflections on the Mangarian heritage, uh, to which uh, I myself uh, added the, the subtitle with a special reference uh, to economic uh, methodology, uh, which uh, I did uh, in order to uh, delve more into something I do know something about. I mean, not necessarily a lot, uh, but something because uh, I'm a philosopher and a political scientist, uh, not uh, an economist. So here's uh, the agenda of uh, my talk. The first part uh, will be uh, dedicated uh, to the said uh, book that is uh, about uh, to be launched uh, by Institute uh, Misesa. Uh, I shall also tell a few words about uh, why you should look forward to reading it. Uh, and uh, in uh, the second part uh, of uh, my presentation, uh, I shall tackle the question Menger versus Mises, or uh, better put, uh, Menger versus Misesian. Uh, that is, uh, I shall present to you a few remarks uh, on how Menger and uh, Misesians, that is uh, Ludwig von Mises and uh, his followers, uh, sort of uh, part uh, company in the field of uh, methodology, uh, that is to say uh, how Misesians differ uh, from Menger in uh, that field. So uh, here's uh, the cover of uh, the book. Uh, the title reads, uh, Long Live the Revolution, 150 Years uh, of uh, Karl Menger's uh, Principles uh, of uh, Economics. Uh, like uh, Miko, I said, uh, the book is uh, going to be translated into English uh, soon, so uh, you will have uh, a chance uh, to read it. And uh, here are uh, the contents. Uh, as you can see, uh, the contents uh, are uh, very versatile and uh, interdisciplinary, which uh, I believe uh, reflects uh, the scope uh, of uh, Mangarian theoretical heritage. Uh, so uh, let's uh, start uh, with uh, two uh, very pertinent uh, and uh, timely pieces uh, on uh, monetary theory. Uh, first, uh, we have uh, debt uh, and uh, the origins of uh, money by uh, Przemysław Rabka, uh, which is uh, a response uh, to the challenge uh, posed uh, by uh, the modern monetary theory, uh, according to which uh, the Mangarian theorem uh, about uh, money arising uh, out uh, of uh, commodity market uh, cannot uh, truly explain uh, the origins uh, of money, as uh, Przemysław Rabka points out. Uh, the exact opposite uh, is uh, the case, and, uh, and uh, the Mangarian theorem holds true, uh, the MMT challenge uh, notwithstanding. Uh, secondly, uh, we have Bitcoin uh, from the Mangarian perspective uh, by Łukasz Jasinski, again, a very timely one, uh, tackling uh, the challenge uh, coming uh, from the Austrian side uh, this time. Uh, some Austrians uh, claim that uh, the emergence of Bitcoin uh, cannot be explained, uh, explained uh, in uh, light of uh, the Mangarian theorem. Uh, however, as uh, Łukasz Jasinski points out again, uh, the exact opposite uh, is the case and uh, the Mangarian theorem uh, still holds true. Uh, we also have uh, a piece on social theory, uh, which is uh, Jakub Wisniewski's uh, spontaneity and uh, social cooperation. Uh, we also have uh, a few articles that apply the Mangarian theoretical legacy to contemporary problems of uh, economics, uh, Karol Zdybel's anti-common selected applications, uh, as well as Robert Ciborowski's uh, technical development and uh, economic uh, growth. Uh, we also have uh, a piece on the history of uh, economic thought, Menger and Anwar Revolutionary by Professor Witold uh, Kwaśnicki, uh, which uh, I believe uh, is uh, a quite a revisionist one, in that uh, it uh, calls uh, into question uh, the commonplace uh, belief according to which uh, the marginalist uh, revolution uh, was uh, something that uh, happened uh, all of a sudden, all uh, at once. Uh, rather, as uh, Witold Kwaśnicki points out, uh, the marginalist uh, breakthrough uh, was uh, foreshadowed uh, by numerous uh, economists uh, uh, who've uh, delivered their books uh, prior 
to Menger, Jevons, and, uh, and Balra. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, we have uh, my favorite uh, topic, which is uh, methodology and uh, philosophy of uh, economics. Uh, here we have uh, Krzysztof's, uh, Karl Menger's uh, philosophical inspirations, uh, which uh, again is a sort uh, of uh, revisionist uh, in that uh, it uh, calls into question uh, yet uh, another commonplace uh, view, uh, namely the one uh, holding uh, that Menger, philosophically speaking, uh, was an uh, Aristotelian. As uh, Krzysztof uh, points out, it's uh, uh, not uh, quite uh, the case. Uh, in reality, uh, Menger's uh, philosophical position was uh, much more nuanced and uh, somewhat uh, more uh, modern than uh, this uh, commonplace view uh, seems to imply. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, we have the, the contribution of uh, mine, uh, Mengerian Untersuchungen, Untersuchungen, excuse me, and uh, the methodological development of uh, the Austrian school, which uh, brings me to the second part uh, of uh, my talk. So uh, let's start uh, with uh, what almost goes uh, without uh, saying. I'm saying almost because uh, after all, I'm telling you all that stuff. Uh, so. It goes without saying, almost, that Menger and Misesians do share the following fundamental positions. Yes, both camps, so to speak, uh, believe in the primacy of theory over historical experience, which, uh, as you probably know, was uh, the very bone of contention in the famous Methodenstreit. Uh, both sides uh, believe in the nomothetic status of uh, statements of uh, the economic theory. Uh, and uh, last but not least, uh, both uh, sides uh, promote methodological individualism and uh, subjectivism. And uh, those are the platitudes, uh, so to say. Uh, there's uh, much more to it, uh, however, Sorry. Uh, let's uh, start uh, with uh, a quote from Ludwig uh, von Mises commenting uh, on Menger as a methodologist. Uh, as uh, you can see, uh, Mises uh, actually uh, didn't uh, speak particularly highly of uh, Menger's uh, methodological uh, legacy. Uh, and uh, here is why. Oh. Excuse me, because uh, I'm not sure if I've uh, given you the chance to uh, read uh, the whole quote. In short, uh, Mises says uh, that uh, Menger was uh, somewhat backward uh, methodologically. Uh, here is uh, why uh, Mises uh, could have uh, said uh, such uh, horrible words uh, about uh, his uh, master. Uh, here uh, we have uh, a brief uh, tabular uh, summary of uh, four crucial divergences uh, between Menger and uh, Misesians, uh, all of which uh, pertain to the field uh, of uh, economic uh, methodology. Uh, so, uh, first uh, off, uh, that's uh, the first uh, cell, the first uh, part of uh, the table. Uh, in contradistinction to Misesians, Menger believes in methodological unity of all sciences, social and natural. And uh, this unity uh, consists uh, in there being two principal orientations of research, the exact and uh, the realistic empirical one. Both present in all branches of science, from physics to economics. The exact orientation starts with uh, theoretical modeling. Uh, mind you, not with uh, a priori axioms, as uh, Ludwig von Mises uh, would like to have it, uh, but with theoretical modeling, and then proceeds deductively, thus uh, arriving at specific theorems having the status of uh, universally valid laws of phenomena. The realistic empirical orientation, on the other hand, commences with uh, observable data in order to collect it and uh, sort of uh, synthesize it inductively, not deductively, but inductively. Moreover, uh, Menger postulates that in economics, there also be such uh, inductive or statistical generalizations, along with deductive theorems, such as the law of uh, demand or uh, the law of uh, imputation, although 
Menger doesn't adduce any particular examples here. Uh, secondly, Menger, uh, unlike Misesians again, was by no means a consistent apiarist. That uh, exact uh, deductive part of uh, economic theory is, uh, per Menger, arrived at by dint of the homo economicus model, which is evinced uh, by Menger's uh, definition of uh, economy as the precautionary activity of humans directed toward covering their material needs. Further, in contrast uh, to later Austrians, Menger maintains that even the most fundamental economic laws, like the law of demand or the law of uh, imputation, hold true only under the assumption of uh, economic actors being rational and self-interested. This, in turn, makes Menger a moderate conventionalist. Even though he believes that the motive of self-interest is a prevalent and, uh, so to say, ubiquitous tendency of uh, human nature, it is uh, still just a commonsensical observation that needn't be correct everywhere and uh, forever. It is uh, open for future revision, that is. Uh, thus, economic laws, per Menger, are ultimately established by means of a convention, of a certain, of a certain convention, the homo economicus convention, that is. Uh, thirdly, uh, that's the third part uh, of, uh, of the summary, where Mises and the Misesians see a sharp contradistinction or sharp opposition between the praxeological theory on the one hand and the history on the other, Menger sees continuity. Again, uh, by virtue of uh, his uh, exact versus uh, realistic empirical distinction, uh, Menger holds that uh, elements of both theory and history, because uh, the realistic empirical orientation is sort of uh, historical in the Misesian sense, are to be found in all sciences. And uh, finally, Menger kind of uh, surprisingly concurs uh, with uh, the German historical school that at least history must adapt uh, what uh, he terms the collective point of view. That is, history must take the totality of a given nation's or people's, you know, folks' uh, life as uh, the ultimate given of uh, the analysis without any need of uh, foregoing back uh, to the individual. This, again, in sharp contradistinction to Mises and Misesians, makes Menger a methodological holist in the field of uh, historical science. Uh, now, to conclude, uh, why is all this of uh, not only historical interest? Uh, well, unlike uh, Mises, I do believe that uh, Menger's uh, distinctiveness vis-a-vis -vis his uh, successors is uh, a true heritage uh, in that it might still inspire us to pose relevant and uh, critical questions. And here uh, we have uh, three examples of uh, such uh, critical questions, questions uh, that uh, might possibly contradict the uh, prevalent Misesian uh, orthodoxy. So uh, first, uh, is uh, the Austrian method truly a priori? Or maybe Austrians must espouse some form of uh, conventionalism. Uh, Parenthetically, uh, that uh, was uh, exactly the topic of uh, Alexander Linz Bischler's uh, outstanding book, uh, titled uh, precisely, Was Ludwig von Mises uh, a Conventionalist? So as you can see, uh, the uh, debate uh, is uh, still lively, still, uh, still open. Uh, second, uh, even if the former is the case, uh, that is, even if uh, the Austrian method is truly a priori, is praxeology all there is uh, in the realm of uh, social theory? For example, uh, just uh, take Mises' theory of uh, bureaucracy. I think it is uh, crystal clear that uh, what uh, this uh, theory offers is uh, not a purely praxeological reasoning, but rather an applied one. Based, uh, let's say, on several substantive 
assumptions regarding the motivation of uh, bureaucrats. For example, uh, they're not being selfless angels or uh, selfless uh, benefactors uh, of mankind. Or think about uh, Noam Chomsky's generative grammar theory or any paradigm of uh, DIR theory or general sociology as such or general linguistics as such. All those fields, while, while clearly theoretical, under Mises' uh, very restrictive approach, would have to be relegated to the realm of history as they lack a uh, praxeological background. Uh, thus, it uh, seems uh, that uh, here, Menger might have a point. Uh, Austrians definitely need some theory of such, uh, so to say, uh, intermediary disciplines. For example, uh, how do we formulate such theory as, uh, for example, uh, the realist theory of uh, international relations or Noam Chomsky's uh, generative grammar theory? How do, uh, how do we arrive at uh, their theorems? Uh, how do we validate or invalidate them? Uh, those are the questions uh, that uh, such Austrian theory, such Austrian uh, amended methodology uh, should uh, address. And uh, finally, uh, is methodological individualism applicable to all branches of uh, social sciences? Uh, even though uh, Mises' uh, praxeology uh, seems uh, to have uh, proven uh, that uh, starting uh, from methodologically individualist axioms, such as the action axioms, uh, is indeed uh, the way uh, to go in uh, economics, it is uh, still an open question whether uh, the same goes uh, for history, whether it is not the case that uh, in history we need a more totalistic, so to speak, uh, approach. Uh, I mean, uh, one starting from the totality uh, of uh, the conditions uh, of uh, the life of a given nation or, or people, as Menger uh, would like to have it. Uh, we all know uh, that Mises uh, wrote uh, a book dedicated uh, specifically to those uh, problem, uh, problems, I mean uh, his uh, theory and, uh, and history, uh, but uh, the book, uh, at least uh, with respect uh, to history, basically reiterates uh, the German tradition of uh, the first day in uh, methodology and, uh, and theory, and uh, obviously from then on, uh, a lot uh, happened uh, in this field. Uh, so uh, I do believe uh, that maybe following uh, Menger, uh, our Austrian theory, our Austrian methodology, uh, does need some adjustments uh, in this field. Thank you very much for your attention.